So today I've got this Sharp. It's a model LC 37 D as in David 43 U as in Union. It's totally dead to the world. I don't see any lights down here when I hit the power button. This uh, video I'm making really isn't going to be a troubleshooting video. It's more of a tech tip just because I've been here many times on this set. And so I just wanted to pass it along real quickly. It's a fairly uh, straightforward, pretty easy fix on this one. So real quick, uh, troubleshooting uh, with the set on, plugged in, make sure your uh, negative lead is on chassis ground. Luckily this set, uh, you can't really see it, but it has quite a bit of metal back here that you can use as a ground. Just attach your clip lead to a piece of metal here. We want to look at this power supply labeled BU5V. That's the backup 5 volts. And it's the second pin down from the top on this connector. You just want to look at that and under normal circumstances you should have 5 volts on that pin. If not, then you definitely have a problem. So that's why the set's not going to even try to turn on. It has no 5 volt power supply. So I'm going to shut the set off real quick. I'm going to take my uh, clip lead here and I'm just going to clip it on one side of this large 5 watt Zener diode. I'm going to go to the other side. This is with power removed and measure the voltage on it and I have no voltage whatsoever as you can see on the voltmeter here as long as my lead doesn't get in the way. Next I'm going to switch it over to ohms. I'm going to do the same thing, read across the diode. It reads 29 ohms which is definitely bad. Now this diode is a 150 volt 5 watt Zener diode and the part number for it, uh, you probably may or may not be able to read that on the camera, 1 N is a Nancy 5383. Got this from Mauser. Got a five pack of them. I got a couple of them left here. I'm going to go ahead and pop that diode out real quick. We'll test it out of circuit just to verify that is indeed the problem and see if that remedies are dead set. Okay, so here's the power supply. First thing I want to stress is this set has a couple very large filter capacitors here. So what we want to do is get over here to where the leads are, find out where they come out on the other side of the circuit board, which is these pads right in here. And we want to get our voltmeter on those two big filter capacitors, put it back in the volt position. And we want to make sure that we don't have an excess of voltage on these two big filter capacitors if we're going to be working on the board. As you can see on the meter right now, I have 2.5 volts. So that's really nothing to be concerned about. If it was above about 15 volts, I'd want to let you uh, just let it sit and discharge, or you can use a higher value resistor, a couple thousand ohm, 5 watt resistor to discharge it over time. You don't want to short directly across the filter capacitors if they are highly charged, because that could either damage the capacitor, damage the circuit board, or if you inadvertently don't get directly across the capacitor, you could damage another component on the circuit board. All right, so I'm going to remove this part just as if I were you and you don't have a lot of tools. I mean, I do have my solder sucker that I could use, but I want to do it as you would do it at home. So hopefully you can bear with me and see what I'm doing here. I'm going to add some solder uh, to both sides of this Zener diode just to help uh, dilute the solder they have on there and the more solder means the more heat. Uh, I know you can't see what I'm doing now but I have uh, my pair of pliers across one end of the diode. It is in standoffs so I'm going to heat up the other end. Hopefully it'll become molten enough once that standoff gets completely heated up that I can just pull it out. There I see some solder and I've got one end of it completely out. I'll try to turn this over and show you what I'm doing here. Hopefully you can still see it on the camera. So now that I've got one end out, I'm just going to heat the other end. And it just pulls out of those standoffs. While the solder is still molten, you can take the circuit board and shake it, which I'm going to do right now. It's probably going to be off the camera, though. 
it cleared out quite a bit of the solder but I'll still need to find a way to get the excess solder out of there now the other way that you could get the solder out of here is if you have a uh, vacuum solder pump you could suck it right out of there and it would come right out okay so real quickly I've added some more solder to it and hopefully it's not off the camera completely but I'm gonna get it good and molten and I'm gonna shake it down again and that one looks pretty good I think I can get through the tip of it um, with the soldering iron now it did leave a little splash right here hopefully you can see that on the camera where well, you need to scrape that off so I'm just gonna take a little screwdriver and wallow out those standoffs that are right here that I can get my new diode in there okay so I've got most of the solder out of the holes next I'm just gonna take my little screwdriver and I'm just going to wallow out the holes that I can get my new part in there I'm gonna go ahead and do it on both sides of the board just to make sure that it goes through. If you have a little drill bit, you can go ahead and use that as well. Next, I'm gonna get my part formed and ready to go. Hopefully I'm all on the camera and I'm not blocking this with my hands. Uh, pay particular attention to the polarity of the diode. The band is the cathode side and it's marked on the circuit board as such. Uh, make sure your standoffs do not fall off. If your standoffs happen to fall off, then go ahead and make sure you stand up the Zener diode off of the circuit board because it does generate heat. Uh, this diode absorbs a reverse transient voltage. It does generate quite a bit of heat. Uh, make sure you solder it fairly quickly not to overheat the diode at the same time. Once you've got it, go ahead and trim the leads. I've already pre-trimmed them so they're not super long, but I have one that's sticking out a little bit. And like I said, make sure that you skim off all the excess solder that you used as you tried to fling the solder out of the circuit board. Now, let me go ahead and grab my meter real quick. I'm just going to set the meter on the side of the board. Hopefully it's within. No, it's not. Let me zoom it out and move the camera just a little bit. I'm going to put it back on ohms and check this dial real quick. We're up into the millions of ohms. Let's grab the original diode. 29 ohms out of circuit, so definitely that is a problem. Um, talking very quickly about a Zener diode, I do have another one in here about how the Zener diode operates. If you have your diode meter and you just want to check it, put your black band on the cathode, which is, or the black lead on the cathode, and your red lead on the anode. And it should check just like a regular diode with approximately six tenths of a volt drop. Now if this Zener diode were only a couple of volts, I'd be able to read it reverse bias. But because it's a 150 volt Zener diode, it won't even start to conduct until the voltage drop across the diode is 150 volts. So it acts like a regular diode in all instances other than it conducts if it gets above a reverse voltage of 150 volts. Zeners are available in a wide variety of voltages anywhere from just a couple of volts up to several hundred volts for different applications. So let's go ahead and put the board back in the power supply, and, or the uh, board back in the TV and see where we get. Okay, so here's the set after replacement of the diode. I'm going to take a look at the BU 5 volt source. And we have 5 volts just like we should. Looking up here, it's UR13, unregulated 13. I have absolutely nothing. Let me go ahead and I'll turn the set on. And you can see I have 12 volts there now. All right, so we got our set all working to replace that Zener diode. Definitely did take care of it. We've got our uh, 13 volts in the uh, run part of the power supply. Our backup 5 volts is there now when the set is off, which is what we're definitely looking for. So I uh, just wanted to give you this real quick tip on uh, a problem we've had with the Sharp in the past with the uh, defective Zener diodes. Once again, thanks for your uh, views, your comments, your support. I, I try to answer the questions as much as I possibly can, but... Unfortunately, I can't answer every single question. I just don't have enough time. Once again, with your help, you can keep these things out of the recycle bin 
out of the landfill. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.